What is up guys, today we're going to be covering section 9.1 and 9.2 of the syllabus. So have a quick read through this and then we will get right into it. So the first concept that we will be dealing with today is the single circulation system which is the transport system that exists in fish. So in fish here, um, in one full circulation of the blood around the body, it goes through the heart only once. So it goes through once here, around the body, and comes back in through the heart. So that is a single circulation system. In us, and in a lot of uh, different mammals, we have something called the double circulation system. So it goes through the heart like this, up to the lungs, and from the lungs it goes back to the heart, and then around the body again. So it travels through the heart two times in one full circulation. So if you take a look at this diagram here, which is slightly more complicated, you see that through the vena cava, the deoxygenated blood, which is the blood coming from the body, hence because the body has already used up the oxygen in the blood, comes through back um, into the right side of the heart. Remember, this is the right side and this is the left side of the heart. The right side into the right atrium, down to the right ventricle, and it gets pumped out through the pulmonary artery all the way to the lungs here. And from the lungs, it travels back to the heart, to the left side of the uh, heart through the pulmonary vein, down to the left uh, ventricle, and out through the aorta to the rest of the body, and then eventually it comes back in through the pole, uh, sorry, the uh, vena cava again. Okay, so uh, deoxygenated blood comes through the right side, and then it gets pumped out to the lungs to get oxygenated, and then the oxygenated blood comes through the left side of the heart and then gets pumped out to the to the body where they can use that oxygen um, for respiration. Okay, and uh, we've got this thing called the septum, which is the muscular kind of uh, separation from the right and the left, and that is very important because you don't want the bloods to mix, and that is a lot to do with maintaining the pressure, the blood pressure around the body. Okay, so this. Um, this double circulation system is quite beneficial uh, beneficial for the efficiency of the circulation. Okay. So here is the structure of the actual heart, and you will need to know all these structures. So as I said before, deoxygenated blood comes through the vena cava, into the right atrium, and then gets pumped to the right ventricle, and then it gets pumped out through the pulmonary arteries to the lungs, and then back through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium, pumped into the left ventricle, and it gets pumped into the uh, aorta where it travels out towards uh, all the different parts of the body that may need the oxygen. Okay, so the right atrium pumps it into the right ventricle, and the right ventricle pumps it out, and then it comes into the left atrium, pumps it into the left ventricle, and pumps it out again. Okay, so. <clears throat> Remember, the definition of an artery is that it takes blood away from the heart. So don't think about um, anything being oxygenated or deoxygenated because it, it doesn't necessarily always make sense. So arteries always take blood away from the heart, veins always take blood to the heart. Okay, so we can see that the pulmonary artery, okay, is pumping, carrying the blood that's going away from the heart and to the lungs. Okay, so that is an artery despite the fact that it's carrying the oxygenated blood. So the pulmonary artery is taking blood away from the heart and to the lungs, whereas the pulmonary vein is carrying oxygenated blood, um, but it's a vein because it's taking blood from the lungs to the heart. Okay, so it always makes sense if you think about it um, that way. And uh, here you have these valves here. Okay, and if you think about it, uh, if the right atrium pumps the blood into the right ventricle, okay, and the right ventricle pumps the blood out into the pulmonary artery, when this right ventricle kind of contracts, then you don't want any blood back flowing into the previous chamber, okay, in this case, the right atrium. So that's why we have these things called valves in a heart. And valves are these flaps that only allow one way uh, transfer of the blood from chamber to chamber and it prevents the backflow. Okay? So that is extremely important uh, when we're dealing with uh, the heart. Okay, so here we've got the two atrioventricular valves, and atrioventricular coming from the valves that separate the right, uh, sorry, the atrium and the ventricle. 
And you've got the semi lunar valves, which are the valves present in the uh, the aorta or the pulmonary artery. Okay, so when it gets pumped out like this, you don't want any blood going back into the right ventricle, or you don't want blood going back into the left ventricle. Okay, once it's been pumped out. So here, these two are the semi lunar valves, and these are the atrioventricular valves. Okay, and in when we compare the thickness of the heart from the right and the left, it's not exactly the easiest to tell with this diagram, but you need to understand that the thickness is substantially thicker in the left side than the right side. And you can understand why that might be, because the right ventricle, or the right side of the heart, only really needs to pump, pump the blood to the lungs which is not very far from the heart. But if you think about what the left side of the heart needs to do, which is pump the blood around the whole entire body, you might you know, realize that the force of contraction needs to be much, much stronger, and hence the muscles on the left side are actually much thicker than the right, okay, because of their different uh, functions. So what is the effect of our physical activity on the heart rate or the pulse rate. So when you exercise, your body needs you know, more nutrients such as glucose and oxygen and stuff like that. And they also need to get rid of more waste products because they are respiring that much quicker. So therefore, blood needs to circulate faster around the body to give all these cells around the body the nutrients that they need and also take away the waste products that they are producing. Uh, so when you're exercising, your heart rate will therefore increase to do that. Okay. So the coronary heart disease is something that you might have heard about before, but we will learn about it in much more depth uh, in this course here. So obviously the heart itself needs a source of energy and therefore a source of blood supply. But the blood going through and out of the uh, heart as with the chambers before is not how the, bl uh, the blood actually gets to the heart itself. All right. The heart has its own special supply of its blood, and uh, it's called the coronary artery. So all this, all these blood vessels that are in the outside of the heart, okay, okay, is the the coronary artery, which provides the heart muscles with the energy that they need to constantly contract um, to pump blood around the body. Now, obviously, you can tell that if this coronary artery gets blocked then eventually the heart will no longer have a blood supply and therefore it won't have the nutrients um, and the oxygen to you know, carry out its function, which is to contract and pump blood around the body. And if that happens, obviously, we are in deep trouble. So when the coronary artery gets blocked, it's called the coronary heart disease, and this can result in heart attacks. So there are certain factors uh, that increase the risk of a coronary heart disease. For example, poor diet with too much saturated fat, this leads to cholesterol building up in the arteries and eventually blocking it up. Uh, we have smoking, which uh, the nicotine in the in the cigarette can damage the heart and the heart uh, the blood vessels. Uh, we've got stress, which tends to increase blood pressure and results in fatty material collecting in the arteries. Obesity, which adds extra strain on the heart. Uh, and it makes it harder for that person to kind of exercise. Leading on to the fifth point, a lack of exercise can also be a risk factor in the coronary heart disease development because the heart muscle loses its tone and becomes less sufficient at pumping blood when um, they lack exercise. And sixth factor, inherited factors, which you know can't exactly do anything about that. Um, the best bet is just to make sure that all the other five you know controllable factors are not you know uh, are controlled so that you're not putting yourself at risk. So once again, thank you for watching and uh, make sure you subscribe and share the video 